Well, hello guys, I'm back. Um, now we're going to talk about where I'm at on the Hickok. Um, I have stripped her down and I'm still stripping and checking and cleaning and you well, know, it's a long drawn out process but after uh, realizing that it was going to be rather interesting trying to check the wiring without pretty much stripping it down uh, I decided well there are a lot of things about it that I wasn't real happy the way they did it and plus there was a lot of not really the best solder joints so and that means I want to clean her up real good and uh, continue testing and checking stuff so far everything is coming out pretty decent but the only concern I have had so far has really been with some of the wiring uh, not that it's real bad shape but I'm not absolutely sure what they were thinking when they did this but a lot of wires were bent around on top of each other and bent back and routed in such ways that they were pretty tight and uh, you know, I just didn't like the way they did it so when I put it back together it's going to be I think a lot better shape but anyway uh, this is where we're at uh, a lot of the wires have been cut out here um, like I said on a video before I, I have uh, checked every one of these resistors uh, now that they're basically fully out of the circuit and they are in excellent condition they all measure um, right where they're supposed to now um, like I said I got the, a lot of this wiring here and a lot of it's actually not in bad shape but it's just way longer than it needs to be which is fine because um, I think the previous person that worked on this and stuff when they made their connections they've had the power transformer out and when they made the connections to it um, they didn't clean the connections up so which I still have to do and they were pretty ugly uh, so I want to get those cleaned up and looking good I have been uh, cleaning the switches up and getting them so they're working the way they're supposed to uh, and everything and, and getting them the points all cleaned up on them and, and stuff and uh, getting everything kind of shined up nicely so it looks a lot better than it did uh, I have went through and checked every one of these these little pigtails and how they're all connected uh, I'm pretty sure this is actually factory here I think the only one that ever got rewired was this one here with uh, other whites but I have went through them anyway and double checked them everything now I'm going to clean these switches up so some of this will get disconnected and then uh, reconnected uh, I'm not real some of this has got some pretty nasty uh, I don't know it partially melted insulation on it uh, so like right in here and here so I'll redo that but when I'm checking it to the uh, schematic they check out you know, they're wired right so uh, I still have to go through and make sure all the tube sockets are wired correctly um, and there's no shorts or anything in that area and uh, I have replaced two resistors that were original to the unit I believe they looked very old uh, one is this one here which is going th this is the shorts light it uh, shunts the short the light bulb and uh, it was a, it's out of tolerance but not by much by about 100 ohms so and it it I think was original so I thought well I'll just go ahead and replace it and the other one is this one here this number 43 180k 
This shunts across the uh, gas 2 uh, switch. Basically what you do is you push gas 1, you adjust R to a point on the meter and then you hit gas 2 and if the tube is not gassy then the needle should barely move if, if any. If there is gas in there then the needle will move. If it moves more than one mark then the tube is too gassy. Well this resistor what they're doing is they're um, this goes into the grid circuit and uh, applies a certain amount of load on the grid and voltage to it and if the tubes gassy the, it will show up on the meter and it was 10 percent tolerance it was just outside that too high so I went ahead and replaced it and I'm there was like two other mica caps still in the unit um, they may be fine I haven't even tested them but I thought you know they're not that big of a deal and I'll go at one one's over here with the noise test I'm going to replace it and uh, oh the other one's right here I'm going to replace it so just to be on the safe side they're probably original so that means they're you know 60 70 years old so uh, L which is this guy here I've been kind of cleaning him up a little bit and uh, he's supposed to be 150 ohms on each side he measures 150 ohms uh, R is supposed to be around 3k um, it's this one here uh, again it it measures well it's measuring uh, 3010 ohms so that's well within any type of tolerance so he's fine these here I will clean these up make sure the contacts are good they're, they're the various other switches that's in the unit um, the other thing I want to talk about um, I know that uh, you know I'm probably preaching to mostly to the choir on this but uh, I know some people have troubles with these band or you know multi position switches and knowing exactly you know you know which is pin one where they hook how do you figure out where they hook at and everything so I thought I'd take an opportunity just kind of go over that um, on this unit on this particular one and uh, and also kind of give you some insight on others that you might run into First and foremost, trying to determine how these operate and what's being switched in, what's not, and, and you know what's hooked to where and everything else. <clears throat> Part of that's got to do with uh, you know, or how easy it's going to find out is how good a schematic you got. You know, some schematics are fairly decent, like this one here, where they they kind of draw out the switch. They also give you this is the back view these views here are the back side of the switch okay and uh, for the, th the three main ones here and uh, plus they give you a pretty decent breakdown they tell you you know section 5, 4 and so forth and front and rear and everything but then they also tell you uh, the switches are viewed from in opposite the control knob so they're telling you which in you're viewing Section, sections are designated number one are the nearest the knob so they'll be the, this is number this will be number one and then number two and number three and number four and so on uh, they also tell you that they're in position one as far as the schematic is concerned so that that gives you more information so with that being said how do you determine what's going on and where they hook well there's various means but when you got a decent schematic like this uh, especially when you got a decent drawing this is switch A I've mo moved it in position one so it is matching exactly what that picture shows so if you set it there 
and you can see where this wide piece where it's setting you can see where pin 1 is it tells you pin 1 goes clear up and it it's always contacting when you see um, I'll find a pointer here when you see something like this where you see short ones like this these short arrows but you see a long arrow that's always touching that designates a pin or connector that's always in contact you can see on here where that connector right there this one here will always be in contact with that center ring so that's pin one and so now you know where pin one is it goes in counterclockwise with it set and looking like this so there's pin two we got a wide piece that goes to where pin three would normally be but there's no arrow that's because there's nothing there it's just a hole only thing that's there is pin two so you can see where that wide band if there was a connector there it would be in contact with that one and this one so that tells you you know that shows you where that we're in position one because they're saying this is position one so this is position one and on here anything it's just a little circle with no arrow de denotes these open areas that have no contacts in them so the ones with arrows have contacts so from that then you can go to the schematic and here is section four which is this rear section remember they say that they start numbering from the knob in so from the knob in that's section one section two section three and section four rear side of the switch section four rear shows the same thing as this except now we got wires connected you can follow the wires out see where they hook um, where they eventually come off and connect to other components up here but you also got your numbering you can also go through here and number these I just put number one on there some of them I went ahead and numbered around but you can mark them in if you want and um, that way it makes it a lot easier to say okay pin 2 hooks this orange colored wire here because there's pin 2 because this is pin 1. Pin 1's down, pin 1's down. There's pin 2. Pin 2 connects what I colored orange, follows up, goes over here, and goes here, and here, and here, and we can follow that out on this switch and see where all they hook. You can also follow it and see where it would have hooked up into the different tube sockets and stuff. So that, that's how you um, can really, you know, start figuring out where everything goes. Now, what if you got a schematic that doesn't have anything? Maybe it's showing something like this, where you just, you know, it just shows an arrow. Uh, doesn't really show much of a switch. And it says, well, you know, I've got a resistor here, a resistor here, and nothing on that one, and so forth. Now, the things about these little dotted lines... That's another thing I want to talk about. All that means is these are all one switch. The dotted line you can think of is actually the shaft that goes through. Because all these are connected. When you turn that shaft, each one of these are all turning at the same time, the same amount. Well, this here, this dotted line means that there's, uh, it's moving two contacts at the same time. Well... When you got something like that, then sometimes what you got to do is look for those components that are connected. Say that we didn't have this here, so we wasn't absolutely sure, you know, what stuff was denoted, you know, showing here. Well, then we could actually start maybe following this the circuit out. We could pick major items like a tube socket, you know. Hey, it's connected here, comes down, connects here. Um, to find that pin, or this pin, you know, uh, it shows here it's connected to this other switch. Well, we can find the two switches, and we can start looking for the common wire. Um, connects to a resistor, we can start locating them resistors and try finding those. So, you just start looking for 
stuff that you can find easily. Some of the best ones is like tube sockets, coils, tuning condenser, stuff of this nature, other uh, connections like maybe your antenna connections. You know, you, you, a band switch may have uh, one lead that's going right directly to the antenna because it's going to be switching that antenna to different coils or different parts of a coil. So it'll be one wire that goes clear over to your antenna connection. Well, that's pretty easy to find. It's on the back of the radio. You see it. There's antenna. It says A. You can follow it back and you can find that little pin that it hooks to on that switch, on that wafer, and go from there. Um, so that, you know, look for stuff that you can find real easy and then follow them wires back. And you want things that maybe are real easy where it's just a single wire going back to the switch, you know. Like this resistor would be a, probably definitely just a single wire that goes back to the switch. Now that switch happens to be, if I find it, yeah, I lost it. There it is. That happens to be this switch right here, is that one. Now, you'll see these type of switches where it's just, uh, you can't really see into it or anything, and it's got all these little connections on the back. Something I want to point out about those. The ones that's on the center, in the inner ring, if you will, inner part, uh, this is not fully populated. It could have more contacts here and here, wherever one of those little holes is. But these guys in the center, or this wiper arm. That's the common terminal. That's the thing that turns with the switch. The ones on the outside are the ones that's going to be connected, like here, connected to a resistor and resistor, and then the other one uh, actually goes over to switch, but it uh, doesn't actually connect to anything. But uh, the, they're the ones that's going to be switched in or out of the circuit. This is your common here. So when you got something like this, the center ring, the center contacts towards the center of the switch are your commons. So that's how you can denote something like this and know what this one is and where it connects. And then you can find these guys from that point. And then you got some really multi-position switches that don't have on this schematic that doesn't have this. All it shows is this here. Well, one of the great things about this, number one, right off the bat, is this little, what well, I painted bluish colored. Uh, this connects right to both sides of the switch. It tells you front and rear section. Well, this is the rear section here. It really looks just like this. All the, everything would be mul uh, filled out. You got one unit, again, there's one that's common, and then the switch itself has got off that ring just one little contact that's rotating around. Well, off that common, it comes up and comes back over and hooks here to another common. Well, that happens to be inside here. Now, it's kind of hard to see, and the camera probably can't see it, but it, this wafer is just upside down to this one and it's going in there and it looks just exactly like this S big ring with the one contact always making contact but there's that connection right there <coughs> that finds it real quick then you know again it told you that everything's in position one position one action happens to be ballast this happens to be the switch that is used to switch to different filament voltages uh, position one's ballast. Now what you can do is if you got you know the switch still in the cabinet you can look on the other side get it turned where it's supposed to be and and uh, then find it from here. If it's outside the cabinet just remember where position one's supposed to be at uh, where they got it set at and you can just set it in the cabinet to get it exactly the way you want it the way it's supposed to be and switch to where it's supposed to be at. Um, that way you'll get it so th these contacts are right where they're supposed to be at. Again, the open circles, nothing's there. And that's the way this is. You can see that there's some missing ones along through here. That's them 
open holes. They just don't exist. But when you don't have this nice little thing here, then you start looking for common points, again looking for your various connections. And the nice thing about something like this, these are all numbered just exactly like this, 1 through 12 on the power transformer. There's 10, 11, and 12. There's 1 through 4. And the other numbers are over here on up to 9. And then you come over here. And then these have got letters on them to denote C, D, E, F, G, and H. So you could actually, before it ever was disconnected, you could follow these leads out and say, oh, okay, now I know where everything connects. So anyway, I hope that helps. This has gotten really long. Um, I hope that helps with uh, understanding these various switches and takes some of the mystery out. If uh, anybody's still having any potential troubles with them, then um, just let me know and I'll do uh, something even a little more deeper into it. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys and, and your comments and everything and uh, I'll be getting this uploaded later t this afternoon um, it's uh, right now four o'clock here right this moment right now I've got the other video uploading <laughs> got 122 minutes I love how slow they are so once that one's done I'll get this one up and so guys will get a couple videos by tonight. So thanks again and see you on the next video.